Well, good morning again. Good morning. It's a blessed morning. It's beautiful again. A little cloudy, but um, clouds never stop the sun. The sun is always coming up. Hey, listen, I have a question for you. What do you think stops us from hearing God's voice? How many of you, of course, each day seek to hear his voice? You want to hear his voice. You want to hear the direction he would give you, his wisdom, his revealed knowledge, his understanding. But what do you think causes us, believers I'm talking about, to not hear his voice? What blocks that voice? What blocks the ability for us to clearly understand without a doubt what he is saying is the truth and we lead our lives for every word that he speaks and illuminates our pathway? Well, let me take you through a couple of scriptures today and let me share with you a couple of things today that really I think will help give us an understanding how we get blocked from hearing God's voice. Does God ever stop speaking? Well, that's the first question you should ask. And the answer is no, he never stops, ever stops, ever stops speaking. He's been speaking from Genesis 1 and has never stopped and will continue to pray and continue to speak and continue to give us revelation. Now, then if that's true, as a part of the formula, remember when you were in math class, the part of the formula, if that part is true, then what is the negative? What is the cause of us not hearing his voice? I want to share with you one of the most important things is hearing. Hearing. But have you ever said, if you're a parent, to your kids, didn't you hear what I said? Uh, have you ever thought to yourself, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear you say that. And so suddenly we start to realize in the human level how we don't even hear each other. You could be in a conversation with somebody and be a, mi a million miles away. I know my wife always checks me on that. But in turn, when we're speaking with God, how do we get to the place where in 1 Samuel 3.10, young Samuel, before he had even started his journey as a prophet, a powerful prophet, in 1 Samuel 3.10, he says these words, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Speak. I'm listening. Now, if you went into the Hebrew, where that was originally written, and you hear the word listening, there's a connection to Psalms 46.10 that says, Be still. Close off your mind. Close off your human thoughts. Close off your feelings. Close off every bit of distraction and noise. And know, conceive, perceive, understand, I am God. That's Psalms 46.10. It's the basis of the relationship of really listening. Like Samuel said, Lord, speak. I am listening. So what blocks us from hearing God's voice? Other thoughts, other voices, our attention being given to other things and not listening to the voice. Let me read you a really neat blessing I found this morning in a book that I don't go too often to, but I think it's important as every other book in the scripture are, but it's Revelations, and Revelations 1-3. Now remember, all through that first series of, of verses, of uh, chapters, it continues to say, if you have ears, listen. <laughs> One time a young, uh, young student, when we had a youth Bible study, said to me, well, we all have ears. <laughs> what do they mean, if you have ears? He said, listen. And I related to him that we all have ears, but we're all not listening. We all have ears, but we're not always listening. But here's what it says in Revelations 1, 3. It's a blessing. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of prophecy of Scripture, of God's voice. And blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. What time is near? Each moment of your life is headed to a destination of eternity. Each step we take, each day we go through, is one day closer to our final day. Yes, in the scripture it may be referring to the relationship of Christ coming back and we're waiting for that with open arms and excitement, but let's take it more personally on a one-to-one -one basis. In your life today, how important is it to hear God's voice, to really listen to Him, to hear Him? 
That's one of the very important parts of the second workshop in our program coming up uh, in, in May that we're going to share on not only how to hear his voice, but how to hear his voice for the application of living out what he says to us individually, personally, and for our own life. Not as a corporate, that's fine, that's Sunday. Those are the things that are important for us as a, as a Koinonia, as a body of Christ. But really a personal, personal clarity of knowing what he says to you in regards to your things that you're doing in your life that aren't good for you, things that you're doing in your life that are good for you and do more of them, things in your life that you should be doing for your wife, for your husband, for your kids, uh, things that you should be doing nutritionally or you shouldn't be doing, uh, putting in your mouth, all those things are for you individually, that intimacy of that relationship of hearing his voice. And that's really the workshop too that I really want you to really hone in on and, and really put to practice once you go through that. If you have joined us, if you haven't, there's a, there's a registration right here uh, for you to register uh, in regards to, um, in fact, I can put it in there again, uh, in regards to, let me do that for you, I'm going to put that in here. It's not uh, letting me do that, but I'm sure that Randy or one of the team will help me with that by putting that in there. But let's go back to the lesson. It's really important. What blocks, what hinders hearing God's voice? If one of you have a grandchild and you're really concerned about the circumstances, as I've shared with some of you, that uh, they're, not, they're not being raised in the ways of the Lord, what do you do with that? Well, you could cry. You could be miserable. You could fight. You could be angry. You could force and, and push your way through. Or you could step back and silence those feelings, those emotions, those things that are not of God, and listen closely to his voice and hear what he says for your individual personal situation and circumstance. He knows everything. And then once we listen to it as the blessing said out of Revelations 1-3 today, then from that point we put it into practice. And that's sometimes very difficult because it's not what I want to do, but it's what he wants us to do. So then what happens? Then we have to engage in the wisdom and knowledge to know it's not by my strength and not my power, but my power, but by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God that is living within me, that gives me the ability not only to hear his voice, but also to believe and put into practice. And that is really where we begin to clarify the intimacy of our relationship with Christ. What do you think? You think it's important for us to hear today? If you think it's important or you're listening, uh, like many of you that I prayed over your prayers from yesterday that you had put in there, if you think today it's important, you say, well, Jeff, that's a rhetorical question. That answer is yes. Well, let's, let's go deeper. Come on, let's be real for the moment, as the young people will say. Let's get real. Really listen to his voice to the point where if he says something you don't want to do, like if you're angry and you have justification for your anger and he says, do not go to bed on your, on your anger. Don't let anger go to bed with you. And you're still angry. What do you do? You have to overcome, take captive those thoughts, but you can't do it on your own strength. And that's what he's also going to tell you. He'll say, Jeffrey, I, I know you, you can't give this up right now. You're, you're, you're frustrated. You, you're, you've justified your feelings. You've been unjustly treated. I understand where you're at because I've been there. That's Christ speaking. Been there, gone through that. But in turn, what's more important is that I'm with you, he says. I will give you strength. And what's impossible for you is possible for me when you release it to me where you hear my voice and you say, Yes, Lord, thy will be done. Because remember in Gethsemane, Jesus said, Let this cup pass me by. I really don't want to go through this. That was Jesus. But he said, Thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. What did he mean that when he said that in Gethsemane? He meant that I can't go through this in the human level that I am as, as a human being, even though he was divinely embodied with Christ. And so are you, if you've accepted Christ. But his flesh, his mind, his ego, his feelings, his emotions didn't want, didn't want to go to the cross, didn't want to pay the price for all of us. But in turn, he said, but thy will be done. 
Now, you may not be going to the cross in times, but you know, to forgive, that can be a pretty big cross for some of us. To go the extra mile after force to go one, that can be really hard to do. To turn the other cheek, that even can be more offensive. And if you turn it and get slapped again, to turn it again, ooh. <laughs> Impossible things from the human level of nature. But in turn, what's most important is the abilities to embody and be embodied by the power of the Holy Spirit and his voice within you so that you're hearing him say, I got this. I'm working all things together for the good. You know, Joseph in Genesis chapter 50, he wanted to destroy his brothers who threw him into slavery, robbed him of his childhood, on and on and on if you know the story. But God, he said, what man meant for bad, God meant for good because he saw the full spectrum, the full panorama of what his life came to because of the things that he submitted to God, listened to God, continued to be encouraged by God even through his difficulties. So I, I tell you these little stories and I read you out of Revelations for one important, important message. Don't let anything block hearing God's voice. Don't let your stubbornness, don't let your anger, don't let your unforgiveness, don't even let your hurts, pains, sorrows. Go to Jesus and know that he's gone through all of that. So he can say, I know what you're going through. And he will say, I will strengthen you. I am in you. You're more than a conqueror. You can do this through me, through the Spirit. And that's what it all comes down to. All the difficulties, all the circumstances, all the situations all come back to the same thing that represents for us to trust in him, to lean on him, not to be playing religion, not to be playing Christianity, but to do that. Now, are we going to fail? Let me close this with this summary. Are we going to fail? Yes, yes, yes. Would you put in the, in, the, in the comments, yes, I will fail? Just put yes, yes, I will fail. I know that I'm going to fail many, 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 many times. Seven times 70 as uh, Jesus was teaching Peter about forgiveness. But he's always there for, with forgiveness. He is faithful in his forgiveness to continue to restore us, to continue to renew us, to continue to refresh us, and to continue to teach us, and to continue to guide us, and to continue to strengthen us. Is that what you want? Well, I hope so. <clears throat> I hope so that every day that you're here that you want that. So be sure that if you are looking to go deeper into your growth, deeper and wider and higher into your knowledge and revelation of God's love for you and his voice speaking to you and the plans he has for you, then join our workshop that's coming up. The registration is here under the title. Uh, don't, don't do it by yourself. Cut and paste that and send it to everybody else you know cut and paste the new video that we just posted. I'll be, send, I'll be posting that right after this video uh, session. You can come back here or the private Facebook group. And I'm going to be sharing with the private Facebook group today. Uh, I tried to get to it yesterday, but things uh, changed in my schedule. But today I'm going to be in the private Facebook group, which is also on this post. So you can go down below and join for free our private Facebook group. And I'm going to be sharing with you how to truly do what Christ said to do. Go make disciples out of all nations. And that starts first with your home. Then it goes from you to your home, to your community, to your relationships, your work. And that I'm going to share today how to do that so that you can fulfill the real calling, the real commission of Christ to really help others find their way to that personal, intimate relationship. Maybe not the way you found it, but that personal, intimate relationship that gives them the strength to say, I'm listening, Lord. I'm listening. Speak. I'm listening. I'm listening. And I want to hear you. Even when I don't feel like it. Even when I don't think I can. I know you can. I hope this message really, really uh, stimulates you to listen closely. Stimulates you to go deeper. There is so much richness. So much incredible richness in an intimacy relationship with Christ hearing his voice, leading your life with life application steps illuminated by him that is just over the top. And why we don't do it 24-7, and I'm not here the first to tell you, I wish I was doing it 24-7, but little by little, little by little, adding one more day, one more, yes, Lord, I'm listening, yes, Lord, thy will be done, will change and continue to change your life to the best life ever, which is our journey, 
our journey of transformation into eternity here and now, if you choose and want to live that way, as well as the eternity of life that we have after this life on earth. Have a beautiful day. Let me know any of your thoughts. I see a lot of yeses. I see Debbie, yes. Uh, I know I will fail. Yes, <laughs> Debbie, I'll say amen to that. I know that. Uh, Janet, uh, I agree. We've uh, we've shared that so often. Uh, we're never going to be the most perfect parents, the perfect husband, perfect wife. But, you know, the perfect one that lives in us, forgives us, builds us up, strengthens us, restores us, and even restores those relationships and circumstances that we keep listening to him in every situation. Uh, we'll take a little couple more looks at, at these. Uh, Rebecca, you're right, guaranteed, 100% guaranteed, I will fail. Well, good. You are being on, each one of you are being real. Johnny, uh, in the same way, you, yes, I will fail, that's, uh, that's there. Uh, yes, 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 from Becky. Again, that's not a put down, that's not a negative con a, uh, confession, that's the truth, and the truth will set you free. The scripture says in John 8, the truth will set you free because of what? Because once you recognize it, and that's what we're going to be teaching in the first workshop, you know, once you recognize these false beliefs, then truly, truly, uh, you're able to start to turn them over to Christ and really embody your abilities and strength with the power of the Holy Spirit and not by your human spirit at that point. Um, I am having procedures this morning. Please say a prayer for us. Uh, Johnny's going to have a procedure this morning. So, Johnny, let's pray right now. Lord, we just bless that procedure, the doctors, the hospital, the, the nurses, and every bit of that procedure that he's going through, that you complete that procedure so that he is done and finished with this situation in his health and bring him to wellness. I pray the prayer uh, of 3 John 1 verse 2 that says that he will prosper his body mind soul and spirit all together as they prosper in you in jesus name and rebecca i keep trying to open my heart rebecca don't stop continue to seek and continue to seek and he will open and find that place in your heart that he will dwell in even bigger and wider and in the places in your heart that have not been open he will show you how to open those through his voice so hang in there hang in there it is a good the good news that he has never ever failed even though his timing is different than ours uh, johnny said he asked the lord the captive is take captive his thoughts yes those thoughts are just evil at times well I, I, i'm going to go through all of your uh your responses this morning and prayers as you know, yesterday we continue to pray we'll pray for johnny and uh, i'll see all of you from the facebook private facebook group that is free join me over there uh, later this afternoon and i'll be sharing with you uh, the relationship that uh, uh, what christ said was the great commission to go out and introduce people share with people the good news of christ in them the hope and glory if they accept him and uh, by joining this or this group this you know faith tribe or joining us on a workshop can truly help them take that next step and if you were the one that took their hand or gave them the invitation you're fulfilling that great commission that christ gave have a beautiful day i'll see you tomorrow